Hello, hello. May God bless you. May prosper you this day. My name is Rick, and I am the Cryptocurrency Watchman. Okay, guys, we're going to be look, taking a look at an ICO that is launching in a little over 18 hours, 26 minutes, and 49 seconds. And it's called Matrix. They are a decentralized collaboration platform. They have bounty systems. They have a, a library of digital assets, actually 3D digital assets. And that'll be explained later on. They offer rewards and incentives. Basically, the way the way the program works is a problem is presented, whether it be scientific, whether it be medical, whether it be engineering. The the possibilities are pretty much endless. You can present pretty much any problem that you may have, and you create a bounty on the problem, and then you put it out there for everybody to see. And then you have individuals that that create submissions and they put in these submissions. And with the submissions, if you are chosen as a solution for the problem that is presented, then you're paid. And you're paid with the MTX tokens. Matrix uh, is basically, it is the token of a company called Nanome, who also supports a company called CalcFlow. And another company called Nano One. They're they're basic um they're basically offshoots of Nanome, but all in one, they're all Nanome. And Matrix or the MTX coin is the coin of Nanome. Now Nanome operates basically in a virtual world. They uh they they deal with medicine, robotics, energy, they they have future projects coming up with robotics, energy, bio, and uh, materials, nanomaterials. And as we know, when it comes to nanotechnology, there is no limit to what can be done with nanotechnology. You know, we're, we're seeing things get smaller and smaller. I mean, you, you have something that you hold in your hand that has a terabyte of memory in it. You know, that, that's just, that's unheard of. Especially when you think about the first computer when it came out, you know, it was, it was the memory, you know, the memory back then there were, you know, you've got, you've got more memory in your phone now than what it took to, you know, launch the first uh, rocket into space, you know, to land on the moon. It's just amazing. It's amazing. And of course, all that is due to nanotechnology. And of course, we see a lot, you know, in a lot of the sci-fi movies, things like that. We see a lot of nanotechnology within the sci-fi movies. Um, some of it seems a little scary, but really when it comes down to it, it can be very beneficial in a lot of ways, particularly in the medical field. I mean, we see if, if you've done any kind of, uh, you know, reading or, you know, e even seen on TV or maybe even researched as far as nanotechnology and actually creating, you know, nanobots that can literally go in and remove cancers, uh, you know, solve heart problems, things like that. And uh, even creating nanobots that can create other nanobots, you know, which which can it can be a scary thing. It can, but um, all in the name of technology, you know, all, all in the name of, of advancement to better our worlds and to uh, and to advance technology as we know it. So let's take a good look at them. Okay, after my review here, I also have a a video interview that I did with Steve McCloskey and Kita Funakawa, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Operations Officer for Matrix and also for Nanome. So uh, it's about a half hour interview with them and they, they go a little deeper and explain a lot of things. The connection on the interview wasn't exactly the best. Um, it kind of went in and out. However, you can make out what's being said. It's a it's a, it's a little sketchy, you know, just in a couple of spots. But but the interview is a really good one. It's very informative. It is um. They really explain a lot that is not on the actual website. So let's take a deeper look into them on the review first. Okay, this is the Nanom website, which is the mothership of the of the whole deal of the whole of the whole business. They are advanced virtual reality tools for scientific research and development. I've been reading up on them a good bit, and there was a really cool little video that they had for Nano One, 
and it's just amazing some of the things that they're actually doing with uh on these virtual reality platforms they're actually creating they're creating uh uh different compounds different chemicals they can create engineering projects they they can create um you know scientific projects there's there's nothing that 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 is that they can't do as far as working on these virtual reality platforms it's absolutely amazing what they have going on and of course it is compatible with other uh vr platforms okay uh like i said nanom is you know basically the mothership of the whole deal we have matrix which is the bounty system and of course of course the token that is going to be launched with the ico we have CalcFlow, which is a virtual reality math tool that they use for operating on the uh, on the nano level, and of course Nano One, which is a uh, visualization and modeling tool for VR platforms. And one of their main tools that they use is called a STEM system. It's a wireless motion tracking system. Um, basically, you have uh, you, you have the hand gear. Then you have the goggles, and it looks like you have uh, you would you would strap. I believe you strap one under your head, and then the other two sensors actually go on your feet, and it it actually tracks your motion in virtual reality. It's pretty cool. Okay, there's a video here for Na Nano One that I wanted to play for you, and uh, it's only like a minute long, but it's really really cool and kind of shows you how things operate within the virtual world. So let me just play this real quick for you guys. It's pretty amazing. They're actually taking molecules, you know, and creating chains of molecules. It's absolutely amazing what they're able to do with this. Everything in a 3D virtual world. There are no limitations to what they can do with this. I mean, they, you know, uh, they're dealing with molecules here, but when you think about it, think about the engineering applications. You know, think think about all the different applications. Um, you can you can take projects and begin to downscale them you know you can you can you can literally uh run simulations and things like that and and feel like you're actually right there you know it's 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 almost hands-on without being hands-on it's pretty amazing what what they're doing with the technology right now as you can see they're not limiting themselves to anything there as far as the future industries they're they're there's nothing limited as far as 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 far as their scope and what and what they're willing to move into and start modeling. We talk about robotics, energy, bio, nanomaterials, and of course we know that uh, many of our products are actually going in that direction. It's just just amazing. Okay, here's just a simple way of kind of laying out how it works. A bounty is posted. They have a project of this one guy requests to have a 3D spacecraft model created and and post it as a, as a bounty and so the designs are submitted two users submit their best spacecraft models marshall likes the design and requests a round of revision from the community winners chosen two new users take marshall's favorite designs and remix it marshall chooses a winner and a smart contract distributes mtx to all contributors okay now uh, even though it says two users submit, I don't think that that they have a limited number as to who can who can submit ideas. Now, if you're submitting, you know, garbage, then chances are they're they're probably not going to let you submit again, you know. Or if they see your name, they're you know they're probably not going to have any you know anything to do with you. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I know that they're allowing. You don't have to be you don't have to be Mr. PhD from Harvard. To be able to put your ideas in, you know, it can it can be anybody. Anybody can come in off the street, and if they're smart enough to figure out whatever the problem is, if they're smart to figure out the solution, and then submit the solution, then they have a chance of winning the the contract and uh, getting paid. So 
the best thing about this is that anybody can input. You know, anybody with a valid idea as to solving a problem can input. So that you know, there's no there's no compartmentalizing. There's nobody you know uh, uh, standing over you telling you to give all your designs to them so they can go and submit them and you know and of course get all the credit and everything else and the raises and the bonuses and everything else there's not there's nothing standing in between you and and the bounty person um, now the now the person who is posting the bounty is the one who determines who gets paid so obviously there's some there's some uh, there's some fierce competition going on between the submitters and of course there is an amount a certain amount of trust that has to be placed on the person who is posting the bounty as far as paying out that bounty and of course as far as uh, patents and things like that we actually address that in the video uh, in the in the um, interview video that you're gonna see right after I'm done with the review here and uh, they they touch on that so that that'll be kind of an ongoing progressive thing but you know the, these guys are thinking out of the box you know how many ICOs do you see today that are copycats? You know how many how many do you see for you know they'll they'll take they'll take one subject or one you know or one one uh, you know idea that is making money and then you'll see hundreds of them you know with a little bit of a twist but it's basically the same idea and they all think that you know that they're going to make all this money and they're going to prosper and you know they're going to be the latest and greatest thing you know the best thing since sliced bread. However, I'm sorry to say that many of them are actually going to fall by the wayside. You know, if you notice, uh, you know, with the reviews that I do on these ICOs, I try to, I try to be choosy about the ones that I choose, and I do look for the ones that are out of the norm. You know, I look, I look, I look for something that is that is a, that is a fresh idea. You know, an original thought, not something that is that is you know uh, uh, redone, remixed. And then thrown out there as their own idea because there's you can you can find those all day and they're a dime a dozen. And when you're talking about your investments, when you're talking about your money, especially something that you're going to want to hold on to for it could be two, three, four, five years before you see, you know, any real significant um, uh, return on it. But the returns on some of these are going to be astronomical i mean compared compared to what you put in just for having a little patience for a few years the returns can be who knows i mean it, it can be tenfold you know i mean what you know where else are, are you going to get that kind of uh you know return on an investment so so some of these companies that are coming out are big dollars big bucks you know some of them have potential and this one right here is an out of the box idea. They they are doing something that that nobody else is doing. And you'll see in the video they explain it a lot clearer than I do ex exactly what they have planned. And you can see from their team of people, if you go through and you check out all their LinkedIn pages, you can see their credentials, their backgrounds, their history, and as you can see, they have a large team. And that's not even including the advisors. So, you know, these guys aren't messing around. And they, they have some serious people involved in this project. It, it would take me an hour to, to you know, barely touch on everybody in here. So uh, I'm going to start the video here for you guys. And you can check out the interview. And they're going to clarify a lot of things. I hope you enjoy it. And, again, I'm sorry about the um, – we didn't have a great connection. but But you can hear – maybe maybe five percent of it you might have trouble hearing but uh but it's a really really great interview it's very informative and guys look at these guys okay look at this company look into this company look into the ico out of probably out of out of all the icos that i've done this one and one other are the only two that that i would that i myself would would actually you know invest a large amount of money into you know something something that I know that I know is going to be huge so that but that's that's my opinion okay I am I am not a financial advisor so you know don't don't come at me five years later and said hey you told me to put the money in there you know whatever no no okay make up your own mind do your own research you know look into the company you know look look over the people 
Look who's involved. Do your own research. Do your own homework. Okay. Don't listen to Rick. Listen to yourself. And the best thing that I can tell you, the number one thing that I can tell you is to pray on it. Okay. That is that is that is probably the biggest and best piece of advice that I can give you. But I can tell you, after looking into these guys and talking with these guys, um, this this is going to be huge. This is going to be one to get into, and it's going to be one to sit on the token, not to sell. This is going to be one to hang on to. So let's start the interview. Okay. So we're recording here. Sorry, just going to get some power cable real quick, just so that it doesn't run out of battery. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. Okay, we're ready? Yep. Okay. Hello, hello. My name is Rick and I am the cryptocurrency watchman. We're talking with uh, with uh, Steve and Keita from Matrix. And um, I believe you're you're also part of the Nanomi team. Am, am I saying that right? Uh, Nano. Yep. Man, Nano. Nano. Okay. Nano. Um, Matrix is a, is a is a coin that is uh, actually an ICO. That you've already had your your action uh, in your pre-sale right now, and your sale is actually launching uh, day after tomorrow on the 13th, from what I'm seeing. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, now. Uh, Nanom is, um, I was looking at Nanom and it actually supports Matrix, CalcFlow, and Nano One, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, basic, basically all together. It's, it's uh, from what I understand, it's a, it's, it is a virtual reality modeling platform for, for uh, figuring out science, uh, maybe um, uh, engineering, medical, all different types of applications from what I understand, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, now, um, just to touch a little bit on on CalcFlow, it's a it's a um, it's a virtual reality math tool, right? Yep. For, for for solving problems on the on the nano scale. Is that is uh, that basically what I was saying? Yeah. Uh, so, so Nano One is more for chemical design and things on the nano scale. Mm -hmm. um, CalcFlow is actually open for um, you know, a lot more problems because of all math products. And uh, we actually just open sourced it today uh, to get the tool out there to more people and get more people on board. Okay, can you speak up just a little bit? I'm I'm having tr I'm having trouble hearing you. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's okay. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, Nano One, from from what I read from from the web page, the world's first molecular visual visual visualization and modeling tool for today's virtual reality platforms. Uh, that, now, uh, does this work on multiple platforms? I'm, I'm assuming that you guys have your own platform, but but it works yeah. for uh, is, is applicable for other platforms, virtual platforms. Yeah, uh, so we try to be as a hardware agnostic as possible. You know, we mm -hmm. really to as we are. Uh, so right now we have Nano One on Steam, and uh, internally we run it on Oculus, and um, you know, we're just trying to run it on any hardware that's out there. Okay. Okay. Um, now the applications, uh, as as far as Nano One is concerned, when you're talking about nanotechnology, you know the the um, the possibilities are pretty much endless. You know everything everything is going smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course, you know, of course, we're seeing with computers. You know, uh, if you just talk about the computer chip alone, you know the kind of, the kind of uh, uh, you know terabytes now we're seeing on chips and things like that because of the nanotechnology. And of course, we know that in the medical field. Uh, you know, now technology is becoming more and more, um, you know, prevalent. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, a lot of surgeries, things like that, are actually going to be moving towards nanotechnology, and, and that's that's where everything is going. Um, you know, it can be good in, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, it can be scary for a lot of people, too, you know, when, when you're talking about nanotechnology. I'm sure you guys get a lot of that, you know, from time to time. Yeah. Um, as far as um, as far as the future of it, um, I was looking – you're also going to be moving into robotics, the energy field, biofield, and of course nanomaterials that, that uh, 
um, your website was talking about that. Do you have anything uh, in the works as far as far as anything in the future that would that would help uh, you know uh, drive the company you know to to um, bring more people on board at the platform? Yeah, so I'd say in the first implementations of the platform, we're definitely targeting the medical space. That's where it's most applicable to gifting people's lives, developing cures for cancer, AIDS, Ebola. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that could really affect a lot of humans globally, but we don't have the infrastructure set up to make positive changes to, to find the solution. Mm. So, so really targeting that as a first case, uh, but then branching into other areas of technology, um, even better materials in our day-to-day -day life. You know, if you wanted a, uh, a chair or you know, everyday objects, yeah. the material properties in that chair are, are uh, optimized at the end and it's going to create overall better products in our lives. So it doesn't need to be the you know, nanobots that are you know, doing their, their thing inside of you and killing your cancers. And right. But we'll try to get there. Um, right. But right. There's a lot of other practical applications. Right. Even yeah. like batteries for like Tesla. I know you know, especially given the recent events uh, with the hurricane. I think uh, there was a software update that increased the capacity of the battery for Tesla. Uh, models right and so you know right now like the range that they increased it was I think what six, 65 to 75 yeah three more miles yeah but uh, you know really that's just a software update uh, but what we're looking at is a uh, uh, real materials improvements in the hardware of a battery uh, whether that's lithium ion based or other materials that needs to be explored it's all going to be really at the nano scale at the atomic scale so Really, what we're concentrating with Nano One uh, and Nano Pro, a professional tool, is uh, really looking at kind of the one to one hundred nanometer meter section in general, uh, and whether that's you know medicine and small molecule drug design, uh, or you know better materials in the material side. Okay, very good. Um, your video seems to stop streaming a little bit here, but hopefully it'll come back. But I can't hear you. Um, so um, when we're talking about Matrix, uh, Matrix is, is obviously uh, the coin that you're launching, um, the MTX coin. And we did say that, it, that it's launching on September 13th. Um, it's basically an incentive for, for bounties for submissions, um, for bounties that, that are created within uh on the platform and then the tokens are paid to the to the submissions that are accepted mm -hmm. for for the bounties that are created is that correct yeah so that's definitely a large part of the platform you know, we see it as a really twofold uh, where we can actually split rewards a bit, uh, for different contributors that are creating things uh, and then the second part really is uh, the attribution making sure that we use blockchain to, to correctly catalog and log you know, who did what when. Uh, so if there is ever a dispute to say, you know, I did this before Keta or he did on his own, uh, things like that could all just be tracked on chain. So there's really not so much of a reliance on a third party. Right, right. I saw, I saw that, there, met, that uh, there was a mention in your white papers about a trust issue concerning uh, Actually, more more the people submitting, but but also the bounty creators, the bounty creators, you know, com coming across the submissions, uh, and of course having to view them to be able to to you know to determine which one is uh, is going to be paid the bounty, and then you know maybe issues of s some of the submissions not being paid. Is that is that uh is that an issue within within the uh, the actual bounty creators? So I, I think uh, that, that's an issue that's affecting uh, everybody in crypto right now is, you know, uh, keeping track of good users and trying to mitigate bad actors. Uh, but uh, we're, we're talking about in a few different ways. Uh, one of them is just pure economic incentive, uh, building in mechanisms in the platform to incentivize people from you know, picking themselves or, um, you know, doing things like that. Uh, but then we're also adding in uh, different stages. Uh, so you can think of, you know, like a blind submission period where you can't uh, see anything, but then afterwards, uh, the judge could actually see some of these submissions that are uh, that are uploaded within the time period. Um, we're looking into a Trust Davis model. Uh, UC Davis uh, actually put out a pretty interesting system uh, for distributed trust. Uh -huh. 
So we may be implementing a system like that. Mm -hmm. It's really, that was a tough problem that I believe a lot of people are facing. Uh, and, you know, on, on that note of kind of trust and, and seeing, you know, where, who has kind of authority and, and who gets attribution for what they create, uh, to kind of give you a background on that, um, currently as a company, we're most of our users in the Nano Pro, uh, which is the modeling tool that we discussed earlier, those are in the pharmaceutical uh, company. And then we, what we do is we release a, like a nerfed or a light version of our site software onto consumer VR app stores. So those are people with, you know, virtual reality headsets in their living rooms um, or they're, you know, in front of their home computer. Um, and so we kind of have like these two sides to our business, like one, you know, powerful side, the B2B side that are uh, you know, power users that are used to using the, a lot of the extensive features. And then we have the B2B, B2C side, uh, B, uh, business to consumer side that are just kind of using it uh, recreationally, uh, like hobbyists and whatnot. So the question for us was, you know, how do we connect the B2B side, the advanced users in the pharmaceutical industry, and the consumer side, the kind of hobbyists and amateurs together, right? How can we have the, the hobbyists con contribute to science in an impactful way? Uh, and then not only that, but then also have them get credit for the work that they do. Mm. So we could have easily spun up a centralized server, you know, that was by us, and we could have easily kept track of like who created what. But because the fact that our tools are so powerful, like you could create theoretically, you know, a drug that could, you know, cure a big disease like AIDS or cancer. Uh, we don't want to be the, the centralized authority to say, you know, you created this part and you created that part and, you know, and, and be responsible for that. And so having a decentralized system like Matrix really enables us to kind of step away from that, remove the third party and then have a real true peer to peer collaboration mechanism where you can see everybody, uh, uh, see where they con con contributed and then get attribution for those contributions. Very good, very good. Now, as, as, um, as far as any kind of um, patents are, are concerned, would that, would that be to the bounty creator or, or would, that, would that have to be addressed ahead of time uh, depending upon what, what they're creating? Um, would, would the contributors be, you know, involved in anything like that? Or is that, is that something that has to be taken care of maybe be before the bounty is actually created as far as any kind of patent is concerned? Yeah, uh, so we're going to be exploring a few different options. Uh, for the first part of the platform, we're going to see how people interact with them when they're making those bounties. Uh, so I was putting tokens out there and uh, really trying to build, you know, non-patentable things. Uh, but we do believe that some people are going to want to retain rights at some point in the uh, software's lifetime. When a user creates a bounty, it's very clear on how uh, IP rights uh, may be distributed between uh, contributors. Uh, and then bounty submitters are actually uh, very clear and on board with what, what are the terms of their bounty. Yeah, so, you know, it's been really interesting uh, kind of studying the past of, of in the United States, especially because there's been a constant battle between first to file versus first to invent. Uh, and, you know, with blockchain, uh, and particularly with our platform, with the Matrix platform, you know, it's, it, they kind of converge, right? It's, it's by submitting it to the blockchain, not only do you invent it, but you also file it at the same time. So we think it's, it's going to be pretty interesting to see a lot of the court cases that is going to come up, particularly in blockchain. And of course, I think that's going to be a lot of it's going to be applicable to Matrix as well. I think it's one of those cases where we're disrupting a pretty traditional process in the patent office. And it's going to be interesting to see how it all evolves because from a technology perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but it may take a while for regulation and laws to catch up. Okay. Very good. Um, so it's, ba it's basically set up as a tournament. The, the whole thing is, is basically um, a tournament that is created with a bounty. The, the contributors come on, they, they, they collaborate, they, they put out their ideas, you have multiple ideas, and then in the end, uh, the, one, the ones that are chosen are the ones that are paid. And, and, it, and then the others that, that actually uh, uh, contributed but, but were not chosen, um, they don't, they don't receive any kind of incentive or reward or anything along those lines, right? Well, 
Is it, so that, that, that may be one model, uh, but in the beginning, we're definitely not going to be going with that approach. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that approach may work for some cases, uh, but definitely, in, at least in the early days of the platform, uh, we want to incentivize all positive options. And really okay. encourage people to remix each other's ideas where they're actually building off different ideas and working with each other. Yeah, and then we're also, like we mentioned earlier, we're experimenting with some reputation systems as well. And, you know, the beauty of, of science is that a lot of times mistakes or, or things that are completely in another field affect uh, a field that's, you know, completely unrelated. And so uh, yeah. I think by having these submissions open and available uh, and then having a reputation associated with it, so, you know, even if a submission isn't necessarily particularly a good fit for that tournament, it may be a good general design overall. And somebody, because it's on the blockchain and because it's open, people might come along and say, oh, wait, this might, this solution might actually be good for another purpose that it wasn't meant for the original tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's also kind of a use case. And we see that as a, as a feature of our platform. Yeah. So even yeah. if the solution isn't picked for the current bounty, it may be remixed at a further bounty uh, for the, uh, proper rewards. Yeah, so somebody else with MTX token might come along and say, oh, wait, that design is cool, but what if, you know, we change it a little bit, and then so then they put a bounty on it and see if other users can, can remix uh, a submission from a different tournament. Okay. Uh, Steve, you, you may have to move just a little close to the microphone. You're still kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry about that. I'm understanding it. Um, the... Uh, I have to ask this because I, I always look at this when it, whenever I look at, at ICOs, I always make note of which blockchain that they're that, that they're on, and I you know and obviously you guys are on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, you're dealing with um, uh, Ethereum tokens. Um, are there any concerns as far as the hacking of, of Ethereum in the past um, having to do uh, you know dealing with their blockchain? Uh, yeah, so, so we actually got a, a smart contract audit by Token Market. Uh -huh. So I think that that's a really the most vulnerable uh, spot where you know, hacking uh, can occur on the Ethereum network uh, is in smart contract vulner vulnerabilities. And that's what we saw in the DAO hack uh, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think that uh, everything that we're doing um, has been checked, verified, um, it's open source, it's public. I don't think that there are any holes in our smart contract. Mm -hmm. uh, active steps and uh, key management as well. Uh, but yeah, security is always a, a very big concern, especially when dealing with the blockchain space. Great, yeah. Um, was there any particular reason why you chose Ethereum? Uh, yeah, uh, their, their smart contract system uh, makes a lot of sense. It's the most ready and the most established. Uh, so there, there are things coming for other networks, uh, you know, based on the Bitcoin protocol and things like that. Uh, but at this point, um, Ethereum is the most ready. Uh, it's very active. It's light. Uh, you're able to, to trade uh, relatively easily. Uh, it seems to be like a, a very fresh implementation of blockchain and crypto. And the community seems to be really strong behind it as well. And, and our biggest purpose with doing this token sale is to help grow a big community. And so by doing it all through Ethereum addresses and getting the matrix token out there to more people on the Ethereum network, uh, we think that we could grow a pretty big community. Yeah, I mean, there's already, you know, a huge list of people who use Ethereum. And so in terms of bootstrapping the initial community outreach, it's a really easy protocol to, to deal with. Okay, great. Um, do you know which trading platforms that, that the coin is going to be trading on once it launches? Um, so, so ERC twenty tokens are, um, you know, by their very nature, uh, pretty tradable between different users. Uh, I'm most excited about decentralized protocols like Zero X uh, that essentially allow you to create a smart contract uh, for trading ERC twenty tokens between Ethereum and other ERC twenty tokens. Um, so, I, I think as decentralized approaches like that uh, come forth. Uh, becomes a little bit less relevant of you know, which exchanges uh, each coin is on, uh, because then by nature all ERC twenty tokens are tradable with all other Ethereum or ERC twenty tokens. Okay. All right. Um, so you have a cap of three hundred fourteen million MTX tokens, or a little over. 
um, an Ethereum cap of 161,803, um, which is roughly $47 million um, as far as what, what your cap you're looking at right now. 60% is going towards the ICO sales. Um, 150 Ethereum makes you eligible for 10% uh, discount, 50% for 300, 300 Ethereum. Um, how much is the team keeping for themselves? I didn't, I, I didn't see that in the white papers or in the, on the, um, the um, yeah. yeah, so, so me and Keita and the internal team, uh, we're, we're actually not allocating ourselves to uh, uh, but, but the company that we work for, uh, Nanome, is going to be using these tokens for future platform growth. Okay. Uh, so this may be, you know, incentivizing different users um, you know, on the platform, uh, new users that adopt our virtual reality tools, giving out some tokens to them to help spur innovation, uh, working with our university partners, giving them out to undergraduate students, grad students, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. We're really trying to build a, a token that makes a lot of sense to use on the platform. Yeah, and we're really excited because we already have universities using our other tools, our virtual reality tools. Mm -hmm. And so we see we see this network, this university network, as well as our kind of B2B network as a great way to spread the community and to really use a, a, a high skilled community as well. But the idea isn't just to, you know, have it within high skilled members, it's also to democratize science in general, right? And so and so being able to to, to inject these tokens into different types of communities, whether I think we actually just sponsored a, a hackathon um, at in uh, Downey uh, in LA, yeah. and that was uh, the Space Center, and so we were sponsoring high school kids uh, to develop. Uh, you know, uh, it was a coding hackathon on a Saturday afternoon, and and we talked to the uh, I think the CEO of the Columbia Space Center there, and uh, he's really excited to actually not only use our virtual reality tools, but to also use our blockchain platform as well. Mm -hmm. And so having kind of a mix of these, like, high, like I said before, you know, these, these high skilled users in industry as well as university, but then also mixing it up with these users potentially in these uh, museums uh, around the community. I mean, that's what really what that 25% uh, uh, for the company is for so that we can really spread the message. Okay. That's, that's good. Um, I always, always like to look, you know, to see, what the company is keeping, you know, because it, 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 it sends a signal as far as how confident they feel in what the, you know, in, uh, um, in their business, in their product, in what they're launching, you know, um, because we know how many, you know, um, I'm sure that you well know that, you know, many companies will launch these coins, uh, bogus companies, and, you know, and then they wind up walking with the money once they're launching themselves and everything else. We know that. Yeah, um, that's that's why I have. Um, yeah, we, we wanted to avoid that. You know, we've seen some of these uh, tokens give out of crazy percentages to the founding team, and it's like, yeah, are they really going to use the token, or are they just trying to get rich? Right, right. I really want to use our token, so I actually put aside uh, about twenty six Ethereum. Yeah, where I purchased some of our own token. Yes. Uh, I'm I'm fully in it. You know, I think that our platform is going to be revolutionary centralized collaboration really getting a lot of people around the world to work together absolutely I mean what you know what you guys have going is 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 incredibly unique you know I, I mean I haven't I've uh, I've been looking around you know because and because um, I've been dealing with a lot of ICOs um, and of course you know we we see a lot of copycat ICOs coming out you know coming out um, especially when it comes to like uh, um, you know, marketplace and kind of a PayPal, you know, decentralized PayPal in the marketplace. And they're, and they're coming out by the hundreds, you know, and, and everybody thinks that they're just going to, you know, blossom, you know, and, and, and you know, just going to make all this money. And um, I'm afraid that a lot of them aren't, but I always look for something that's out of the ordinary. And, you know, you guys are, are absolutely, um, uh, you're dealing with a technology that has nowhere to go but up, you know, and I mean, and, um, and with the virtual reality and uh, dealing with the, uh, uh, I looked at the, at the, at the STEM, which is, which is a wireless uh, virtual reality. I don't know if you caught, I, I hesitate to use the word joystick, you know, but, but I mean, you, you know, you basically, you know, it's a, it's, it's a wireless virtual reality body, you know, uh, controller, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And then, and then of course I, I saw the video um, as far as, um, Nano, and uh, it was just amazing, you know, what what they were doing, you know, putting the molecules together, and I, you know, actually designing, 
you know, uh, uh, chemicals and things like that. It's just amazing. Just amazing what you guys have going on. And yeah, definitely. I, I have to definitely kind of give a, a shout out or a spot out to the, uh, our YouTube channel as well as our GitHub. Um, you know, our GitHub, we just open source CalcFlow. You can literally CalcFlow we've been working on for over a year. And so, we, you know, you can look at what we've been working on. There's a ton of code out there that you can go through. Uh, our YouTube channel as well. We have two YouTube channels, one for Nanome and one for Matrix. Uh, and to clarify, Nanome is the company. And then NanoPro, Nano One, CalcFlow are our products. And then Matrix is our next platform that we're bringing to kind of connect everything together. Um, and so, and so we have a, a Nanom channel as a, as well as a matrix channel. Mm -hmm. And so the Nanom channel has, you know, videos dating back to last year, uh, doing, we actually did a tutorial series on how to use CalcFlow and how to learn vector calculus using virtual reality. And so it's, it's kind of like a, you know, a Khan Academy meets VR kind of thing. And so, um, I definitely invite uh, your viewers to look at that, to kind of see, how the, if you don't have a VR headset to, to get a feel about how to use those and, and how we've been kind of approaching uh, these scientific problems uh, in, throughout the, the last years. That's, it's just amazing what you have going on. Um, I have one, actually had one more question. Um, your marketplace said that, that um, people can actually hold 3D assets on the marketplace. What, are, what is, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, uh, sorry that that's a, a bit weird. Uh, we, we're just used to dealing in the, the VR world and, and chemistry. But a 3D asset could be anything. Like, uh, imagine like a 3D printable file or, or like an object used in a video game or even like a math equation uh, that represents a three-dimensional function uh, that, that is an object. So things like uh, that we create on CalcFlow. Uh, but it could also be something like a chemical structure. You know, typically, we draw chemical structures on a 2D chalkboard uh, the chemicals uh, exist in nature and they're three-dimensional. Um, so having these three-dimensional proteins and chemicals, um, files like that, it's essentially a, a list of a bunch of coordinates of all the atoms in three-dimensional space. Um, so so we, we deal with a lot of 3D file formats for chemicals and mathematics and uh, you know, VR objects all the time. Mm -hmm. so, so even things like that could be uploaded and used on the matrix platform. Yes, you know, a lot of people don't think of chemicals as 3D uh, because they just see the formula H2O or whatever. But really, there's a, there's a three-dimensional structure that's associated with that, right? Um, and so being able to put that on the blockchain as well as like mathematical formulas. So if you think of like a TI-84 traditional, you know, a 2D calculator, that's an X equals, you know, Y equals, right? But then if you have the, the Z or the, the third dimension, then you can actually create 3D shapes using pure math. Uh, and that's actually what's, what's awesome is that the file size for that is a lot less than a traditional CAD file or a 3D uh, file because traditional CAD files, OBJ files, STL files, those are all the file types used for 3D printing. Those are essentially made up of a lot of nodes and edges or triangles. Whereas if it's a smooth surface that's represented by mathematics, you know, sine X goes on forever, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just sine X. And so the information that's used to represent that is a lot less than kind of traditional models. It's a lot less information to store it, but a lot more information that we could gain from it. So you can scale it to any size you want. You know, if, you, if you take an object and make it too big in traditional video games, you'll see all the triangles. Uh, but with mathematic equations, you can make it the size of the solar system. You can make it uh, as small as a virus, as small as a molecule. Uh, so it could really be extensible and scaled between any, any scale. Yeah, amazing. That's just amazing what you guys get, have going on. Now, um, uh, the platform is going to be up and running once, once uh, uh, at the end of the, of the ICO sale, or, or is there a little bit of lapsed time? No, I, incentive program? Right at the end of the token sale, uh, we will have a web interface uh, for interacting with the Matrix platform. Okay. Uh, in terms of full virtual reality integration, uh, that's going to be coming uh, relatively soon. I think that there's a lot of uh, input things, so like you know, basically like inputting uh, equations and stuff while in virtual reality. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to uh, be a little bit of the next step. Uh, but what users can do is essentially download all the things that they create in virtual reality mm -hmm. and then web interface like that. Right at the close of the token sale. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, and in terms of uh, like the complete decentralized uh, completion of the platform, we're looking at around uh, Q2 of 2019. Uh, so we really want to, you know, we don't want to make some promises yeah. that we can't meet. So we see this as constantly evolving. You know, like the, 
the thing that we're launching at the uh, end of the token sale uh, really is, is maybe an alphanet, uh, where it's interactable, um, users could, could use the platform, but there's going to be a lot of testing, uh, right. especially with the social dynamics of the platform uh, that we really want to clean up and make uh, stellar before calling it you know, 100% launch platform. Yeah, and we're really excited actually about uh, putting out bounties ourselves. So the initial phase of the platform, you know, the company uh, is gonna uh, is going to post bounties for essentially like basic shapes for essentially a, a tiny bit of matrix tokens because they're easy. But but right off the bat, you can already see the use cases of essentially you know crowdsource science where you can have anybody contribute and then get rewarded because of a. a, a if we, if we grow more open source libraries in the beginning of the platform, mm -hmm. the platform is going to have a, a longer lifetime and it's going to have a lot more use and functionality. That's that's great. I mean, so so it'll be it'll be a progression thing, a lot of research development, and of course, with the with all the collaboration, everything is going is going to help with that research and development, and, and it's just just going to blossom. Now, I mean, I think I think you guys. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna, uh, you know, give you guys a big thumbs up when I do the review and everything. And I'm, I'm gonna put the, uh, um, I'm gonna incorporate the video, you know, in, in with the review and everything. But, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, you guys are, are sitting on something that is going to be huge and a lot of people are going to make a lot of money. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to say is that like our, our grand vision, right? Like what, how do we see matrix evolve like five, 10 years from now? Um, I think is that, you know, if, if the Zika virus 2.0 wipes out half the population tomorrow, mm -hmm. there's no infrastructure for like, you know, the CDC, the NIH, the European Union to come together and say, okay, guys, let's solve this problem. Not just the big pharmas, not just the NIH alone, right? right? And so being able to have, you know, the community, everybody around the world try to solve a, a massive problem that, that scientifically is very complex to solve using next generation interfaces like virtual reality, you know, that, that's where we really see the platform going and that's what we hope to make. That's amazing. So, so just global, you know, and, and, and with the, with the compartmentalizing of so many things these days, you know, to, to be able to let pretty much anybody with a real idea, you know, somebody, you know, uh, and it, and it could be Joe Blow from nowhere that, you know, that comes in with the, with a winning idea that would have never gotten heard in any other case, you know, exactly. so it's, it's amazing. It really the is. internet really gives the voice back to the people and through blockchain, you know, it's giving the power back to the people as well. Amen. Yeah. I, I that's, uh, everything is going to blockchain, everything, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing all the businesses, everything is moving away from, from, from being centralized, being regulated to death and, uh, you know, have, having big brothers, uh, you know, big fat toe stuck right in the middle of everything, you know, and trying to step on it every chance we get. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys, it's just amazing. Is there anything you want to add right, right at the end here? Um, no, we're really looking forward to a successful token sale. You know, it's, it's people like you that really help uh, make this kind of thing happen. So we really appreciate that. And um, uh, we're really looking forward. Um, definitely check out our website, www.matrix.ai. Uh, and, um, you know, d just as a security warning, uh, please don't send any ether or anything uh, besides the address that's actually on the matrix.ai website because uh, you know there's been a lot of things happening in, especially in this space uh, in the past few months so just uh, you know a word of caution to everybody okay and I'll be sure to make a little notation of that and I'll and I'll put the um, put the website at the bottom of the comments on the video to make sure everybody you know, sees it here awesome. okay yeah. thank you so much for your time guys um, Congratulations on the on on your business on the launching of your coin and um, and we're definitely going to be watching you because I know there's going to be big things coming for you guys in a big way. That's great. Thanks. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it. I've given you about all the information I can on these guys. Uh, you know, do your own homework, do your own research. As I said, the the uh, ICO starts tomorrow. I give these guys a huge thumbs up. This is definitely one to get into. Uh, this is definitely one to to uh, sink your money into and one to sit on because um, this one is going to be it's going to be big it's going to be big and anybody who buys into this one is going to make a lot of money now uh, I'm not a financial advisor and I don't I don't pretend to be one so you guys just make your own decision uh, do me a favor please give me some feedback on the interview and on the review 
and uh, you know just kind of let me know which way you're going to go on this one. You know, let me and if uh, and if you have any new information, anything that I may have missed, please let me know.